Hello, and welcome to Pickle TV. I'm your host, Amanda Kowski, Gary's daughter. I'm here visiting family, and Gary's asked me if I would host some episodes of Pickle TV, so here I am. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, YouTube, or any other video sharing site, please check out our website at www.pickle.tv. It's the place to find all the videos that Gary's gonna record from all the conferences he attends. If you like the show and you like these conferences, please tell your friends about Pickle TV. You may also think about subscribing if you really like it. Now in this episode, I'm bringing you another speaker from the Emerging Tech Conference that was held in Dallas, Texas this June, 2012. If you're not familiar with the Emerging Tech Conference, you should really check out their website at www.etcdallas.com. On this episode, I'm bringing you Dan Sturdevant. His presentation is Success with Content Marketing. Let's watch it now. I'm glad everybody's here. I hope that I can uh, give you some things that you can take with you. Uh, as you'll see when we talk about content marketing here in a minute, I always believe that if it takes somebody five minutes to read whatever you're writing about, they should get 20 minutes of benefit. So we're going to be here for another six hours. So hopefully it'll be, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm Dan Sturdivant, and uh, as you mentioned, I'm the uh, president of Dallas, uh, the Dallas Fort Worth Search Engine Marketing Association. If you want to take a look at our site, it's dfwsdm.org. I apologize, it's not up to date. I'll give, uh, at the end of this, I'll talk about when our next meeting is. Uh, but right now, what I do is I manage a $4.5 million uh, CPC budget. And uh, to be honest, I hate CPC. I love content marketing. and. We're going to talk about that. So we're, what this is going to be about is content marketing versus CPC. And uh, just to kind of give you, you know, I said I mentioned I, I manage a $4.5 million ad spend. At the end of this presentation, uh, I will have, we will have spent about $10,000. So this kind of give you a perspective of uh, how much money that is and how that works. Uh, some definitions. I was talking to some people yesterday and uh, they said they, no one's ever heard the definition for content marketing, so I'm going to give that in a second, but CDC is cost per click. So if you have ever gone to Google and then you found something and you clicked on the top or on the side, that incurred a cost for that uh, advertiser. That cost can be anything from under a dollar to over $45. It all depends on how competitive that uh, space is and what the keyword is that you put in. So as you can see, it, when you have a, uh, a spin like that, you can things can go out of control really, really fast. So you have to manage that. But content marketing, I'm going to read through this just real quick. The definition is pulled from the Content Marketing Institute, and I kind of chunked it down a little bit, or you know, uh, paraphrased it somewhat. Uh, but this is a, a pretty good definition: marketing technique that creates relevant and valuable content in order to attract target market or target audience, rather and with the goal of, to promote a customer action. And so that leads to the next bullet point, which is CPA, which is cost per action. And well, what is an action? An action can be any kind of uh, thing, but, but what you want to go in and say, we are going to have somebody, after they read this tweet, after they look at this post on Facebook, after they read this article, we want them to do something. It could be as simple as uh, filling out, uh, <coughs> making a comment, it could be retweeting. It could be uh, downloading a PDF. It could be giving your name and phone number so that somebody can call you about something. And it could be buying something. So it could be any, uh, any number of things, and those are just some of the things. But you take cost per click, and then you, uh, in that case, you want to go through what is a uh, cost per action. So what I did was I set up a spreadsheet and in that spreadsheet, I put together some numbers that I had done. I built uh, basically ecosystems, content marketing systems uh, for, uh, for a for-profit school. And in that, uh, drove traffic and uh, had people fill out a PDF, uh, fill out a form, download a PDF, and then the school called them back and got enrollments that way. And typically, that saved, it saved them money on that cost per lead or that, that, uh, what they were usually paying for the cost per action. So, the, not, the asterisk is that uh, I'm not trying to hide a bad word or anything. Is these numbers are all uh, fictitious, but they they work in a real model. Uh, so you know, 
uh, the thing that we're going to want to do is have somebody buy a $100 thing. Whatever that is, it doesn't matter. It, and it's a digital thing. Uh, we're going to spend $500 a month, and we're going to have a, we're going to drive to a landing page, and just so everybody uh, knows, you know, a landing page is something that when you click on that ad, you go into that landing page, and it's going to ask you to do something. In a lot of cases, it's going to fill out a form or buy something. In this case, it's buy something, and this landing page converts at 12%, which is pretty high. But just to use it this uh, for this uh, example we're gonna have both landing pages convert at the same amount, which again is pretty high. Then this model, the cost per click is $5, and uh, that means that somebody may have come and click on an ad and that may have cost three and a half dollars, or may cost five, uh, $6, but overall it's gonna be a $5 click. And just a real quick time out here. This is a typical search engine uh, results page. And you can see free credit score, dot com, and experience, and all like that. If I was to click on these and this was live, it'd probably be about a $12 click, maybe $15 click. I had lunch the other day with a good friend of mine that is a creative director, or was a creative director for Richard's group. And if you've seen the Super Bowl over the last few years, you've seen one of his commercials. Very smart in the advertising business. And he has, how long, when you buy those ads, how long do you get to have that top space? And, I, and it took me a second to realize that he did not understand that this whole thing is a very dynamic, ongoing, half a second buy. And it's not like the old days where you would go in and buy, okay, you buy the number one position on uh, Google for the next week and we're gonna negotiate a buy of uh, you know, $10 million or whatever. No, it's a very dynamic thing. So, a lot of people may not understand how uh, CPC works, but so you have a CPC management component in there where somebody's watching to make sure that you're not getting invalid clicks. Uh, for instance, uh, where I work right now, we have a big investigation going on with Yahoo uh, because we're getting some bad leads, and typically what happens is a Yahoo ad will appear on a uh, secondary website, and then uh, people will fill out the form, and when they fill out the form, that website, that secondary website, gets a check from, uh, from Yahoo. Uh, sometimes people fill out fake information, and then that is a bad click, and so we're investigating that. But uh, now I'm gonna talk to marketing. Again, these numbers are all fictitious. Uh, the action, again, is to buy a $100 thing. The budget, again, is $500. Landing page still converts at 12%, and the content costs are about $40 an article. So we're gonna be doing 12 or 13 articles a month, uh, not a whole lot, but in that, you're gonna spend possibly around $25 to write that article. Now that, in some places, some people, that may be expensive, and in some places, again, that may be cheap. It all depends, and if you write, good, then you can write. Uh, editing, just to kind of keep a voice for the whole website, make sure there's a commonality through it. You want to have somebody read it for you and, and take care of that. Maybe you're going to pay $5. Uh, optimizing uh, through Scribe. Uh, maybe, you know, if you take the cost of Scribe and, and uh, divide it out over several uh, pages and, and several things, it may come to about $5. And again, you know, getting, getting this uh, piece of content ready to be distributed. When I say distrib distribution, it could be on your website or it could be on someplace else so it may be in a, in, and i'm going to use content in a lot of different ways it could be an article it could be a, a graphic like a, uh, a visual that you might post somewhere else and try to have links come back to your site but nonetheless you're you're creating this content and it's going to cost forty dollars a pop and you might think well you know that's forty dollars versus the five dollars on the cost per click there's a big difference there. Well, I'll show you here in a little bit why, why that there is, uh, why this may, may make sense economically. Okay, again, this is search engine page. The top of the yellow are the ads that you click on, and when you click on those, you cost somebody some money. So if you have an enemy, you can go and, you know, just do that. Of course, they, there's some things that will come into play that won't charge you for that. But anyway, and then you want to have these uh, good results here. If you click on this ad, it's going to take you to a landing page. This is a bad example of a landing page. You know, amazing headline, uh, some copy, and a form, buy now, fill this out. So for the demonstration today, 
this landing page is the one that converts to 12 percent which uh, is uh, we all know that's that's a super high uh, conversion rate but so cost per click you click on that it takes it to the uh, to the landing page and if you uh, buy something on that then I made $95 uh, gross profit right in that one click but if 21 people click on that ad and, and not one of those 21 people bought I just spent more than I have on my product so you have to work out the you know there's a balance there you have to make sure you're spending the right amount and driving the right amount but because this is a 12% if I sent 100 uh, clicks there I'm going to make about uh, 12% would be uh, 12 sales there. It's easy math. <laughs> uh, but again, also the other thing to keep in mind, when somebody clicks, somebody doesn't click on that ad, you didn't spend any money, but you didn't get any results. If somebody does click on that ad, then you have, you know one thing, they clicked on that ad, and then you know they went to that page, and so if they bought something, hey, you're a hero. If they didn't, you're not. So this is kind of getting back to the hunter and gatherer type thing. This is the hunter going out, you post this up, somebody clicks on it, now you know that they've come, you've made, it, you've made one kill, now you're going to make another kill by having somebody fill out the form and buy the uh, product for $100. So typically, you're going to spend about $60 to make $100. And if that was the real math or the whole math there, you would say, hey, how, I, how quickly can I spend a million dollars because you're going to make a whole lot more than that. So. And this is the data flow for content uh, marketing. You have your search engine results, and then you have a whole, a whole number of uh, content pages. And again, that you're going to be optimizing for different words that fit keywords that fit within your uh, your sector. And so you're going to have different pages that fit that. So if somebody's going to come, they're going to find, they're going to be searching, they're going to see that on uh, Google, they're going to click, they're going to come into a content page. Now on that content page. You want to have a call to action. The call to action is going to be do something on this landing page. So search engine results, when they click on that, there's no charge. They get to the content page, they read through that, they hey, I'm excited about this, and I'm gonna buy that. So if you have an SEO firm or you do SEO yourself, you should be able to produce pages that go on your website or other places they could at least be viewed 42 times a year. And again, this is an average. So if you think about 42 times a year, and we have a 12% uh, click-through rate or, or success rate on the landing page, that means that page is gonna make five sales over the course of a year. Somebody else shaking your head with a question, but okay. Uh, so what this is, is a chart showing the lifetime of a content page. You, you launch it, it gets up to close to eight in the first month, then it slides down to six, and down to two or three each, uh, each month over the course of the year. That's how you get those 42 views. So if we can follow, and that's typically how a page will launch, it'll get good rate, high rankings, and it'll hold up there for a while, then it'll kind of slow, slowly dip down. And that's not true on every page, but uh, for the most, for the average of the whole uh, site, that's what we're looking at. So over the course of 12 months, that's where your 42 uh, clicks come from that drive into the landing page. <clears throat> and this is a new grid. Notice that $500 line. Remember, that's our $500 a month allowance or our marketing budget that we're going to spend which is not a whole lot of money but for the purpose of this example that's what we're spending and then we have a uh, you know revenue on the other side and then the months for the year going down the other side there this is when you spend five hundred dollars a month and you have the 12 percent click-through rate you have a good click-through rate off your ads you're going to get you're going to profit like the delta between the 500 and the 10,000 you're going to make about eleven thousand dollars a month and any good SEO or SEM firm will be able to optimize the AdWords spend and instead here instead of being a four dollar, I mean a five dollar average click, they're gonna optimize it to four dollars a click. And you see how there's that little bump and you can make a little bit more money. So at the end of 12 months, 
you're making about thirteen thousand dollars a month instead of eleven. So that's good. I mean, you're you're making money. You're doubling your money, and if the if the economics are right, you're making a, a healthy profit off of that. But look what happens when you do when you use content marketing. You use the same. The first month you're going to lose money because you're building up your site. You're building up your uh, but you know traffic coming to it and, and things like that. But as you continually publish, which is always important, then what, what happens is Google comes along and says, "Oh, this is a vibrant site. This is a site that's alive. This is a site that we need to come back to on a regular basis, crawl it, and see what where things are, and then start posting and uh, you know I'm sorry, start push, publishing this into our search engine results." So as you do that, Google gets trained to come back at a certain, uh, certain, certain frequency, and because of that, you, that helps. That's one of, one of the signals that they look for to help your uh, search engine ranking. So as you keep building that, and you look at about month number four, you're, you're caught almost right up with where you were with the uh, cost per click. And then you can see as it grows, you can notice that the delta is getting a little bit wider as it continues to grow. Over the course of the year, you're going to make more money. You're going to lose the first four months, or not be the same with the cost per click. But after a while, because you keep adding to that, remember, we're, we're, the, these pages are permanent versus those clicks. When you click that, it's gone. There's no residual. It's gone. And if you didn't make that sale, it's really gone. But with content marketing, and you keep adding pages to your site, and then those sites, those pages are optimized, and they have a call to action on them. And in this case, the call to action is to make a sale for $100, $100. Then you can see that it starts to go, and then that number keeps going up because you're building out that site bigger and bigger, wider and wider. So, payoffs. In this case, in the way the numbers work, and these these will work, you know, there's all different things that you have to consider. One thing is, is your cost per click really going to be five dollars, or is it going to be ten dollars? Uh, the the campaigns that we run, some of our clicks are at least are sixteen to eighteen dollars a click. So anytime somebody clicks that, they, you know, like I said at the beginning of the, uh, you know, when this presentation is over, we will have burned through ten thousand dollars. So. In this case, in the way the numbers work, the payoff was in six weeks. It started to beat the uh, cost per click in 12 weeks, and we're only spending, we're spending the same amount as we were on cost per click on that budget. So what does that give you? You have an asset. When you're buying CPC ads, they're transient. They, they disappear. You either click on them or you don't, or you know, your consumer clicks on them or they don't, and they're gone. With this, you're building an asset that you have more and more pages on your website and if you use, uh, whether it's uh, Drupal or WordPress or whatever, it's so simple relatively to what it used to be to add content to your site, you want to continue to add content to your site. And so that asset becomes something that, you know, down the road, if you want to um, sell it, you sell it for three times the price in this model, the uh, price would be uh, $66,000 off of Nothing, and then over that time period, you only spent you know eighteen thousand dollars uh, promoting it. So, you know, depending on what you want to do in the end game for this thing, but you're also making money along the way. Um, so you have built up an asset that really uh, that really works out. All right, I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. All right, yesterday we saw this hero's journey. And on this hero's journey, you go through different things, call adventure, refusal, you know, the, the, the monomyth uh, continues on jo Joseph Campbell's uh, example. And then at the end, uh, you return with a lot of vigor and you're excited and everything like that. Well, what I have done, and it's not totally original, but I put it all together so I can take credit for it, um, is turn the sales funnel into a cycle. And if you look at the cycle, and then look at the sales funnel, you'll see there's a lot of things that are parallel, parallel not a one-to-one, -one, but the call to action, your category awareness. You didn't know about this category, now you're finding out about it. Brand awareness, you move around to consideration. 
And then you move around to action and then reaction. What is the final thing in reaction? You come back with a lot of uh, vigor and you want to go in your brand ambassador. So how do you apply content to this uh, sales cycle, sales continuum? Category awareness, you write about in very general terms about what is in this category. You're not, you're not advertising for your product, you're talking about what the landscape is for that product. And within that, your call to action may be, make a comment, get people involved. You get people involved, they're gonna get, they're gonna come back, they're gonna see what's happening and things like that. Then you push it into brand awareness. Now maybe the call to action at that point is sign up for a newsletter. Because what you want to do now that they kind of they're kind of tickled about what you are and who you are, then you want to get capture their name and you want to get their maybe their email. And you have a newsletter that goes out on a, a bi-monthly or whatever frequency it is, and then you have those people and they're kind of caught into that funnel. And then you go further down and you start writing about you know, how you might do comparisons between your product and something else. And so you have the consideration and then you have the preference and maybe you talk about how you won some awards or there's some things that give you some validation. And then purchase intent. Now some things you're gonna to wanna to have is a very simple, hey, I'm gonna buy this now, it's not anything I have to think about. Other things you have to think about, you know, if you're gonna buy a car, you don't just click a button on the website and now you have a car. You have to think about that. So. What are drivers that you can use to help push that intent and keep that purchase intent going? Uh, or if it's not that big of a sales, uh, you know, maybe it's something you don't think about. Maybe there's a sale for that product, or there's a coupon for that product that helps push you into the purchase. Post purchase, you want to have them in your, uh, you know, again, maybe they're in that newsletter. Maybe it's a different newsletter for people that before they bought and after they bought. But the real thing you want to do is push them into being a brand ambassador, and that's where social media comes in and plays a real big part. Right, and then we back up. Social media is in all of these all around, but if you really, what you really want is your, if you saw the Bancor uh, presentation, you want people that are excited to be a chili head uh, for chilies. You want people to be excited about whatever it is your product is and talk about that in a very positive way and get that out of the, out of the open. And I'll, I'll put these slides up either on the ETC site or on that. I see somebody taking some pictures, so don't, uh, I'll have that available. Uh, some resources, definitely Coffee Blogger. Thank you for having them uh, sponsor this. As well as, uh, how many people in here have an iPad? And how many people have Flipboard on their iPad? If you don't have it, boy, you gotta get it. That's one really cool uh, application. It creates an instant magazine and, and it's a Neat. Um, I use that actually. That's the the app I use most on my iPad, followed by Pandora and um, you know, some other stuff. But content marketing. Uh, if you go to alltop.com and follow content marketing there, and then Brian Solis is uh, really good. Uh, he uh, talks a lot about uh, content marketing, and then uh, the Content Marketing Institute. Uh, back in I think it was January, we had Joe Bluzzi. Lucy come in from the uh, Content Marketing Institute and speak at the uh, SMC uh, Dallas uh, meeting. Upcoming uh, opportunities. Next uh, Saturday in Richardson is gonna be the uh, WordPress meetup, uh, Tony's group. Uh, July 10th is uh, Christine Halverson is coming. She's the queen of content strategy. I uh, recommend that you look up the Content Strategy Meetup and see where that is. It's uh, down at Aloft in downtown. And then I would hope that you could come to our meeting, which is on the 18th, and it's at the Hyatt Regency on Campbell at 75 at 6.30 on July 18th. And we're gonna be doing uh, tools. There are a lot of SEO tools that come and go that work and don't work, and we're gonna talk about those, as well as we're gonna have uh, side clinics. And if you were here yesterday, uh, if we, Tony Wright did a site clinic. We're going to have some people from the DFWSCM. It's an easy way. You bring in your website. We'll take a look at it. We'll give you some recommendations. It's very simple. We don't we don't hurt too much, and uh, we'll make it happen for you. But um, that's what I have. And is there any questions? Yes. What on the stats that you showed the pages that took five cells a month? That one. Uh, now people call back. This one right 
42 views. And then uh, of that, people click into the landing page. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. The, there is the, and then they click into the landing page, and then they button and they take something. So you want to have about that many uh, views, and that for a web, uh, for a well-optimized site in a somewhat competitive area, that's easy to do. Yes. Your content marketing. Right now, I have a separate blog for my content marketing. Whole separate website. It's WordPress.com. And I have a WordPress.org hosted website for my company. Mm -hmm. Don't blog on it. And I'm constantly wavering between having, you know, having a separate blog that's branded separately, kind of like this whole thing with, you know, with the content marketing, and a separate site for the landing page, a separate site for the company. What? Uh, Why? Well, well, I mean, is there, is there, is there, is the personality on the, let's call it the blog site, is that different than the corporate site? Or is it the same personality on both? Pretty much the same personality. Then I would move it over on to the uh, corporate site because a couple of things. One, if you're on a, a hosted uh, WordPress.com, always going to be stuff, WordPress.com site, you don't control that. And you want to control everything about what you're doing. And I would move it over there just because you have more control. You uh, can, you know, you want, that's ultimately where you want people to go to contact you or find out how to, you know, use your services and things like that. Yeah, because right now I just link to it on the side to kind of make it, you know, I guess my original idea was to make it kind of like a non-biased kind of, you know, like a magazine that my, even my competitors would read. Well, they're going to read it anyway because they're your competitors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and, and people, you know, if you were going to do a completely rebranded, totally different thing about your industry, which is a good idea, I would do that and then have at the bottom, you know, uh, of the corporate site, if you want to know more about this industry or this uh, profession or whatever it is, go see this. That would even invite your competitors to come be on, you know, be on that site uh, to some degree. And then the reason why is one thing about content marketing is something you have to do on a regular basis. You need to have a publishing schedule. You need to have an editorial uh, calendar. You need to have an editorial bias. You need to have all of those things. And if you can do that and you have the discipline to continue to do that over and over again, your competitors are not going to possibly won't have that, uh, that uh, discipline. As far as straight money, to have it on the same site, right? Yeah. As far as conversions and all that. Yes. Okay. Yes. And yeah, we have eight more hours, so any more questions? <laughs> yes, Mitch. Is, is there a, a way I can get notified of uh, the WSEM meetings? Yes, <laughs> there is, but I don't Probably. remember the code. <laughs> there, there's a, we use a thing, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll update the site soon. It's uh, dfwsem.org, and uh, it's July 18th. Yep. <coughs> We typically have about 100, 100 to 110 people attend. Uh, summer is always slow for you know, all meetups, so or not all meetings. Uh, so we probably won't. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll bump it at right around 100, 100. And you know, I uh, saw Sean Jackson. He's an uh, ex-president, and then Tony Wright is an ex-president, and there's uh, some people in the room here. John was on the board for a while. There's, you know, it's a, it's a very healthy, uh, uh, growing, and ongoing uh, organization. Uh, and I hope you can come, if not the July 18th meeting, then come in August and then in September. Two more. I used to teach a, a lecture course, and I wouldn't let the students go until they answered a certain amount of students. So, I mean, any questions? Yes. No, they're selling, if I, if I understand what you're saying, uh, they're selling snake oil. Uh, no, Google is a big company because they've done some things, they provide value. Yahoo and MSN and Bing and all of whatever that is. You know, there's really, you know, those are the two big players. And, and uh, anybody that's doing anything else and saying, hey, we'll get you 5,000 visitors, they're going to send you five, and then the rest are going to be, uh, you know, bots in your site and that kind of thing. 
So, no, I, I would definitely, uh, you know, uh, there's a couple of things, you know, uh, Google has some really good resources to learn how to manage uh, AdWords accounts. Uh, there's Linda, L-Y-N-D-A.com, which has some really good courses on uh, AdWords and things like that. And then there's Perry Marshall and some other people like that that you can uh, buy their products and then uh, learn about uh, managing. But no, I wouldn't, you know, for, as far as driving traffic and paying for traffic, I would stick with the, uh, you know, the main, the main, uh, the big ones. Yes? So I'm a big believer in content marketing as well, but just to kind of get your opinion on it, with, with AdWords, it's so instantaneous, you can kind of figure out all the numbers pretty immediately. You can know whether or not you want to double down, uh, whether or not it's a good market, but how do you calculate ROI? Do you, when do you start to think about that as far as how much time and energy, money you're putting into the content side versus whether, like, you start thinking maybe I'm not gonna get as much out of this as I am putting in? Well, well you, you have to look at, okay, you know, because of AdWords, you know what that traffic is worth because you're paying for that traffic. Yeah. And so you have to think, okay, and then you also have to look at the volume of that. People are searching for things, and it may be, uh, for instance, uh, the place that I work, we launched a program in Midland, Odessa, and everybody's excited because the excited in a bad way that the numbers aren't there. Well, how many people are in Midland, Odessa, looking for what we're selling? Ten, and we sold those last week. So, but, but uh, so you, you have to set up, you know, a kind of a horizon on how long it's going to take, and then you, you know, you can always. Uh, you know, do some things to juice it, like, you know, continue to run your AdWords until the uh, content marketing picks up and starts to take over. Uh, you can do some things like that uh, and then market the site in a traditional way. With, uh, with video content marketing, you can put ad traffic to it. Right. Yes? So, Dan, what would you say to the person who said, I don't have time to write articles all the time, to make a video about myself, what are the options for people who don't see themselves becoming a content creator or a media creator? You could use services like uh, tech broker, text brokers or uh, the, the miracle of uh, uh, Craigslist. And you can post stuff and find writers and you can find, you know, there's, there's students uh, that are going to college that could use some extra money and quite possibly they know a little bit about what you are trying to promote. Uh, and then uh, hire them. I, I, in past projects, I've used text brokers that have been, uh, uh, that's a good service. Uh, and what that is is basically you go and you pay per article and there's a, a post or a group of writers and they'll say, I'm gonna write that and they write it. You, have, you can refuse that if they don't write up to the level that you, that you want. And they do that sometimes. So you have to have a, a really good brief for them to understand what you're wanting to write for. Same thing would be true with the uh, Craigslist, where you find somebody that uh, is going to write, you, you know, give them a couple of, uh, pay them $25 uh, an article and have them write a couple articles for you and then say, hey, you know, you, did it seem to work, you know, sound good, work well for what you're trying to do, and then go that way. That's one way. Any, one more? Anybody? Yes. Um, what, in your opinion, as far as the, the future of uh, driving tra traffic to uh, websites, do you see it becoming more and more of a multimedia? Oh, uh, absolutely. And uh, what, are, what are some of the things that you might uh, predict? I know predictions are always kind of hard. Well, I, if you were here for Mike Warren this morning, he was, uh, that's an incredible presentation. Uh, I, I agree with that, and I think that, you know, one of the things that uh, somebody said, it may have been Sean, that brand doesn't live, I, I disagree with that, and that, Whenever you create something, that you have to think of the content as an ad unit, and if it, whether it's on your page or your site or somewhere else, there's there's something about that that has to be identified for uh, about you. And as you continue to create more content and you distribute that content and you have that content out there, you're 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 creating a brand for yourself. And so if somebody sees something on another site, but they know that it's from your company or you or whatever. Then and also, well, they then they know. Hey, I, I remember I read that article by that guy, you know, two months ago. I'm gonna read that again. He was really interesting. I'm gonna follow him. Things like that. So, you know, there the using different whether it's you know video, audio, uh, visual, or textual. It's all of that, and it's just a, it's a matter of uh, having 
the uh, either the money or the discipline to continue to do that on a regular basis. And, and you know, things are going to come and go. Like Pinterest is a you know has a lot of excitement these days, but uh, it may not be right for what you're trying to do, or there may be some other things that are better. Well, as a producer, which is what I do in the music business, is we always obsess over perfection. And if there's anything I'm taking away from this whole conversation here this weekend, is that you have to divide that that, that temptation, get it out there, so you don't fall behind. I like what Reed Hoffman, if I get the name right, the uh, CEO of Netflix, said his name, Reed Hoffman. He said, if you're not embarrassed by the first thing you ship, then you you, you took too long. Yeah. Well, I so, over that a long time ago, but there's, you know, there's a point where you want to make sure you have good content. Yeah, but because it's, good content. it's like the people talk about the story write about the story and if it isn't a good message nobody's going to pay attention to how pretty your film is so that, you got to pay attention to your content that, but I, but what's the point when you want to put it out there or you wait too long it, you that's something you have to determine and the market will tell you if you wait too long and, and you spend too much time and again and I, i'm not a perfectionist so you're asking the wrong guy in that respect <laughs> but um, you know it's it's a bang 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 uh, not rapid fire, you know, it depends on the market that you're in, how quickly you have to move. And, and not everything has to be, you know, there, there could be a rhythm to it, and it, and it could be that, you know, this week we're going to write about uh, five things that happened over here. And then you, but you're writing, you know, uh, what Copy Blogger calls it is their uh, cornerstone content. Now, not every, every article has to be a Pulitzer Prize winning piece. It can be close to that, or you know that, okay, we're going to have, over the course of the uh, month, we're going to have 12 articles. Uh, eight of them have to be an A plus, and the others need to be a B. You know, you're not. You have to have the quality control. You're not going to send out something that's good, but you don't need to uh, worry about the perfection. And your readers will tell you if you're not correct or if you're wrong because they'll comment on it and comment on it and uh, do that. There's major blogs that have typos in the headlines, like oh, every day. See it all the time. Sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in San Antonio in the, uh, I think it's the light. Uh, it, I'm amazed at how many mistakes I, when I go home and read yeah. the paper. How many mistakes. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this week's session. Make sure to come back next week for another video from the Emerging Tech Conference. If you like what Pickle TV is doing, I would ask you to consider dildomains.com the next time you buy a domain name or website hosting. Dildomains.com is my daddy's GoDaddy reseller account, plain and simple. So if you like GoDaddy or if you use GoDaddy, please consider using Dildomains instead. In other words, buy your GoDaddy stuff from my daddy. Well, that's all for today. So until next week, this is your host, Amanda Kalski, saying goodbye and thanks for watching.